Hello and welcome to Question and Answers with Gabor. Uh, today we have Pierre Richard again calling in from Montreal, Quebec in Canada. Welcome, Pierre. It's wonderful Hi. to see you again. Me too. I hope you're enjoying the summer. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Wonderful. Okay. So uh, I think it was four months ago that you spoke with us and asked some questions and here we are again. Yes, actually, it was last February. It's more like six months, I think. But, oh, uh, sure okay. Time flies. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, I will call Gabor, and he will, and you can get started. Hi, Pierre. <laughs> How are you doing, Gabor? Oh, I'm I'm doing great, and uh, it's very nice to see you again. Very nice to see you. Again, yeah, too. really nice. Been uh, six months since our last uh, conversation, and uh, this is our second time, and it's like it's amazing. I feel so so privileged to be able to do this with you. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. you. I'm I'm honored. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yes, it's um, very nice. This time flies by. Yes, it definitely does. Definitely does. Um, I, I I was struck with with a question a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, I saw something uh, uh, on, on Facebook with uh, by Francis Bennett. I don't know if you know him. He's a teacher, spiritual teacher. And anyway, he um, his brother just died a couple of weeks ago, and he wrote something on the uh, on on Facebook about unconditional love, the unconditional love that he feels for his brother who just passed away. Um, but with whom he had a very difficult relationship, he said. His relationship was not always easy with him. Yes. Um, I don't know why he didn't go into details, and it's not, it's not important. Um, but I was just wondering, and I thought about my own life, I said, do I ever really experience unconditional love? I don't really think so. I think possibly the only, the only way I, you know, the only time I, have unconditional love is, is for, probably for my for my daughter. I think possibly that's easier if you're a parent. And, and my daughter, anyway, is just so easy to love. She's just a very easy person. She's the easiest person I know. And I'm blessed to have her. But I'm just thinking about other relationships. Uh -huh. All relationships usually have conditions with them. It's conditional love. Like, I love you if you love me, if you think <laughs> I'm handsome, if I, I'm smart or intelligent, you, or you... You listen to me, you care for me. There's all these conditions that, you know, and we see this with spouse, yeah. spouses, family members, friends. We have this all the time. There's always, there's conditions. And that's why relationships seem to go in and out. You know, sometimes they work really well and, and sometimes they just go apart because the conditions are not being met at one point. And then I was really struck by this, what Francis Bennett called unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it seriously. I said, I don't think I really, I've never really experienced it. You know, I think it with, with animals sometimes it's easier, like for a dog or something, because they don't ask any, anything in, in, in return. But anyway, I think you understand what I mean. And yeah. my question is to you, but how do you experience unconditional love? Okay. Well, um, you know, it is too bad that us as human humans we experience something like unconditional love uh, during a funeral or when somebody dies you know it's uh, it's very uh, general uh, it happens a lot that during a funeral family members actually get together and, and and make peace and it's like something rips out of our heart and in the place behind this there's some sort of a shocking, loving feeling. And all of a sudden we make up with the family members. And uh, it's too bad that that's the way it works. But uh, uh, right now, this is the kind of society we live in. Um, um, unconditional love and, and all kinds of other spiritual concepts uh basically just 
remain concepts mostly in our lives because we invented the word oh we should have unconditional love or we should say okay or you should forgive him and, and all these things that <clears throat> really should be real in our life if uh, if we were still living in the golden age it just became concepts and uh, as we live in duality in duality concepts uh, there is you just say oh there's unconditional love and conditional love but uh, the point is this us as people not yet have the faculty to have unconditional love when we were children we had the faculty when we lived in the golden age we had the faculty to have uh, unconditional love what do i mean by that is um, if i want to see i have eyes to see if i want to hear i have ears to hear unconditional love uh, requires the activation of another uh, faculty another sensory organ uh, by looking inside which is what's re required of us by so many great great spiritual teachers like jesus uh, by actually focusing inside i'm activating an organ that i haven't been using for a long time an organ that senses basically the whole universe my my the body happened to be a carbon copy of the living universe and by but by, by focusing inside um uh, i am now in touch with the yet undetermined so my eyes my in my ears are uh, sensing the limited sensing a limited reality and that's what we live in to be able to feel unconditional love as an example we're not yet able to do it unless we activate the organ called the body attention and the body inside the body equals activation of an organ that should be natural to us but we forgot so when i um, focus my attention within my limited senses are still working i can still see and i can still hear and there is another something that's activated I can sense the space within me without me and if I stay here long enough long enough if I stay here a little bit all of a sudden it's like a door opens and I can sense that I'm part of everything now this is very real it's not a fairy tale that is unconditional love in this kind of space we are capable of unconditional love I can look at somebody who harmed me a while ago and be okay and feel love not the kind of love that we think love is it's just i'm able to see from the universal perspective not in a logical way but in an energy essence so when my energy loving essence resonates with yours there's pure unconditional love between us between all people between all living things so uh, the point the point i'm trying to make which is a seem to be an extremely important point is that we not yet have the faculty to actually have unconditional love and it's absolutely essential to have to activate this faculty to activate this sensory organ so we can have that at our disposal Yes, I, I, I kind of felt that that, that was, um, th there was something there, what you, what you just said, in the sense that um, I feel that I, you probably have to have, a, had, a, have had an awakening in order to feel unconditional love, because like I said, I don't have access to it. But as you were going into it, into your body, 
when you were doing that, I, I kind of did it, did it with myself, and I felt, I felt a, a, an open space for sure. Yes. Uh, maybe not as deeply as you, but I felt that there's something in there, definitely yeah. something. Yeah, if, uh, you know, it's so, um, we, we surrounded this kind of important concepts with um, all kinds of mystery. Yeah. And the mind already made a decision that is mysterious and complicated and is for special people. And it's a lie, it's not true. Yeah. If you just if you just look at each other, you know, and and if you just uh, if we just both focus within like this direction, you know, it's just like relax and kind of focus your atten attention within either by feeling your hand or feeling your stomach or any part of your body. And um, it's basically that simple. It's for, it's for everyone. Everyone can actually learn it if they are willing. It actually spreads like wildfire. Unconditional love spreads like a sickness spreads normally. So we should all get, we should all get this sick. The whole society should be sick with unconditional love. And it's simple, it's for everyone. It's not a mysterious thing. Yes, it's sickness like that with no antibiotics. <laughs> That's right. We don't need any pharmaceuticals. We need a special <laughs> medication for it. <laughs> um, yeah, yes, I, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling something anyway. And I know in our last conversation, we were talking about what you call reproportioning uh, your attention. And you talked about that. You talked about going inside and feeding your inner body. And I was doing it because I listened to our, to our conversation this week and I was, I was playing around with it. I had kind of forgotten it. I, I must admit, I, I'm ashamed to admit that I had forgotten it. And, and anyway, I'm, I'm starting to play with it again. And there's definitely something there. Definitely. I feel it right away. And, um, I intuit that, that, that by, by becoming more and more familiar with it, that that's a place that you could live from in a very simple, very simple manner. Yes. Yes. And uh, what's, what's interesting and weird about that subject is that um, doing that, you have the greatest leverage on the universe, in the planet. You know what leverage means, right? Yeah. Leveraged love. The benefits are absolutely amazing. Yet our limited mind cannot value it yet. Yeah. So if I say, if I say to you, Pierre, uh, you know, let's go learn uh, to be a concert pianist. <laughs> Your mind said, okay, I know the benefits. I'm going to practice. I'm going to practice two, three hours a day to be a concert pianist. And in five, six, seven years, you'll be at Carnegie Hall or something, you know, your concert pianist. But what it took, it took practice, right? Absolutely. Yes. Now, the reason, the reason you were willing to practice <laughs> is because your mind recognized the value. Oh, I'll be a concert pianist. Oh, I know that. And the huge problem we have in teaching this simple thing is that the mind not yet have any value system established for it. Yeah. It's like I can use metaphors, oh, it's a gold mine within you, right? It's Aladdin's lamp, it's a magic carpet. <laughs> and of course, by using those, I make it more mysterious, and that's not the intention here. <laughs> and so, um, um, not, um, not trying it, not practicing it is the biggest issue worldwide. I, uh, so what I need to do usually when I uh, teach someone or te have a group of people or something like that, is my number one thing to do is sort of logically uh, come up with some sort of an explanation 
as to the value, right? And if I'm able to do that, and they start to sense the value, and then I'm able to come up with concepts that would reduce the necessity of concept. And if the person is willing to just be with me for a while, then they're usually receptive enough to say, oh, it's, this feels good. You mean I can live from this space? Yes. You can bicycle from this space, play the piano, play the saxophone, you can walk in the street. So the biggest um, obstacle in learning this is simply the evaluation. Once it's valued, uh, someone would practice it, it's really reasonably simple. Yes, yes, I, I, I know exactly what you mean. It's funny that you use the uh, analogy of concert pianist as, of course, you know, I'm a professional saxophonist. Yes, yes, I do. Um, I've been practicing all my life and it's, I feel like an idiot sometimes saying, hey, you can practice, you've been practicing saxophone and, and it gave the results of having done a career in music all my life. Um, I should do the same thing with these pointers and I'm still, uh, I'm, I'm ashamed to say I, I just haven't maybe taken it seriously enough or I, I don't know what, but, yes. but um, it's time, it's time. Yes. And then, you know, I, I'm so grateful that you, uh, that we have this kind of conversation, this kind of honesty, um, <laughs> because um, most of the people I talk to, uh, they, they are like students who don't want to do the homework and don't really want to talk about it. But it, it's, it's perfectly understandable that you don't practice because you don't have the value, evaluation yet upon which you would say, okay, oh, I value this. Let's, there's tremendous benefit because the mind is not yet able to understand and get the tremendous benefit because it has not yet activated the part of itself that would actually value this. <laughs> so it's talking about catch 22 or chicken or the eggs. That's precisely the problem. My problem is in attempting to have the students actually practice. The people who are in a, some kind of a sickness or trouble, they're usually um, more willing. Like if life beats somebody up, they usually, they usually are uh, more willing to turn inside. But we don't want to do that. We don't want to wait for a national tragedy to occur. So it can happen in mass. So yes, it, it's wonderful that you brought it up, you know. You, you know, it, absolutely, uh, Gabur, and, and you're saying this, and. I'm also a teacher, I teach saxophone. And I say the same things talking about music with my students every day. Yes. I'm not going to let any of my students listen to this interview here because I'm going to be right. in trouble. But <laughs> um, it's, you're, you're right, it's getting them to see the validity of, of doing the practices this, and simple practices. Sometimes yeah. the practices, they give very big, very big benefits. So I thank you. Okay. And, I promise I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to take this more seriously. <laughs> yes, that's great. Thank you very much, Gabor. Yes, Gabor, I just want to say thank you. It was exactly what I needed to hear uh, for that, for that, uh, that piece of wisdom, just to, to inspire me to keep on, you know, these, these great practices. I, I, I need to hear that. Yeah. Well, it was a fabulous question. It's, it was an excellent, excellent question. So I'm, I'm glad you asked it. And, uh, as Gabor was speaking, I was just reminded of um, one of his earlier students, maybe even the first one here in Hungary, a doctor, a very in intelli intellectual doctor. He was sitting with him in a coffee shop and he was doing this practice that G Gabor just demonstrated with you. And they went inside and they, they, both of them together, they looked at each other and they felt uh, the inner energy of the body. and. Uh, they went, so they, they weren't even talking about unconditional love or anything. They're just going inside. And all of a sudden, this man said, uh, 
oh my god, I feel like I'm in love with everything. <laughs> he was walking around in this state of love. And so there you have it. If that doesn't motivate you to practice, because that's Fantastic. what happens. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Oh, listen, I'm sold. What can I say? <laughs> Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Pierre, and um, and hopefully we'll have another question soon. Yes, definitely. Okay.